What are we talking about this week? What are we talking about this week? I'm just gonna start. We're gonna wing this thing. What are we talking about this week? Oh, wait a minute. Welcome. Let's talk about the um, championship game. Oh, there's a couple of good things, and uh, and then the new coaches or the fire coaches. I'm glad we waited. Yeah, I am too. I'm glad we waited because I thought. So first of all, I thought we were gonna talk about the championship game, uh-huh. and I got really. Bu- <laughs> it's terrible. I was I wasn't feeling good Monday. I fell asleep and missed the entire game. I slept through really? the entire game. I guarantee when you woke up and turned on ESP and it was a replay was on it. I didn't. I didn't watch any replay or anything. I didn't. I didn't wake up until the next day. I slept. I fell asleep. Really? I got up. I walked over, crawled into bed, and I went to bed. Wow. So, you, so, so, I was so the wife must have gave you what she had the week before. I would. It, well, I, uh, I mean, yeah. she, she was sick. She was sick the yeah. year before. I mean, I was just out. I was completely exhausted, and I just passed out. And I slept for like twelve hours. Well, you probably needed it though, knowing you. Well. My average, so I've been tracking like I'm Fitbit. My average is just over five hours is what I get per night usually. That's about me. Um, I get up anywhere between 4.30 and 5 in the morning. And Let's see. Here's the key with you. What time do you go to bed? About 10? Yeah, well, depending on the day, it could vary between 10 and 11. Let's well, see. I'm averaging probably 8.30, uh, between 8.30 and 9. You know, just when I get home yeah. or if I'm watching TV upstairs, the kids are doing well downstairs, and I'll go upstairs and watch TV, and they stay, you know, doze off. And then three, anywhere around like 3, 3.30, my eyes open That's up. Probably, and I'm, do, I'm up for the rest of the I'm, I'm up. Yeah, when I get up, I'm up. I'm up. So I, so I turn on TV and watch a little bit of Law and Order, SVU, <laughs> reruns, or some House, or some NCIS. You know, just the stuff on – I'm a big USA person in the morning. Yeah. Yeah, because they play all the reruns, and then I'll probably turn on the Channel 7 News. Now that DirecTV has it back on now, I watch the Channel 7 News. That's, that's my news station. Oh, they got it back finally? Yeah, well, they worked it, it, it out. It, it, I, guess they, I guess they worked it out. But, you know, my whole thing was when that whole deal with the DirecTV, ABC deal, they, the, the one day that they did it, there was only one game on TV. And it was on that channel. And there was the one, no, no, one bowl. It was like the second, um, February, January 2nd, when um, the Rose Bowl. Oh, and yeah, yeah. All those games on ESP, and the only game yeah, that was right. on ABC was what? Championship. The Outback. The Outback. Uh, yeah. And then the championship game was on ESPN. Oh, the championship was on ESPN? Yeah, ES, the, uh, ESPN, I guess they, they paid like $1.7 billion <laughs> for the, the, the seat for the bowl championship series deal, whatever it was. That's so crazy. Yeah, but everyone's panicking. Oh, the bar's not going to have it. But there's only one game on ABC that day, and that was the Florida, Florida Iowa game. Which was not very good anyway. No, it wasn't. But but yeah, bar bar owners going out buying antennas and all this stuff and blah blah. I'm like, why? It's one game. One. Well, I missed it. I had whatever she had. I was exhausted, and but but now I'm back to my normal five hours of sleep and, and getting up and cranking out stuff. I do usually. I'm up two and a half hours. Two, two and a half hours at least before anybody else in the house gets up. That's me. And I'll just lay in bed and watch TV or go or go and go down in the basement and do stuff because. My body works off very few fumes, so I don't need much sleep to, to function. Now, when I crash, yeah, I crash. Yeah, me too. But once I'm up, I'm up. You know, you know, you get these people say, "Oh, I woke up at three o'clock and I went back to sleep, and then woke up at six. No, once I'm up, I'm up. It's hard for me to go back to sleep. Me too. But it takes me like no time to fall asleep. Oh yeah, <laughs> I am out. You out? Jeez, my kids coming and said, "Dad, I can't even say good night to you last night, but you were snoring." I said, "I don't <laughs> snore." He's like, "You were snoring last night." I said, "I guess Dad was tired." Ow. Yeah, your pops, your old, your old man was tired. So when I did step and watch the championship game, though, I didn't fall asleep on that one. I can't believe that was like the one game through the Bowl series, well, especially after Ohio State. Yeah, yeah. I was excited for. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it was just you're one gonna of have th- to educate me. Well, it was just one of those deals. What is that? When we, 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 I made a prediction. Well, they, they, everybody, everybody in America, even Vegas, everybody was pulling for Alabama, Alabama, yeah. Alabama, Alabama. And I went and I said, no. Nope. I said, I'm going for Clemson. I think Clemson has a talent that can stick with Alabama, both offensively and defensively. And it's, the game started off slow. I got a cousin back home in Florida. He's like my little brother, but he's my younger cousin. And he we on Marco Polo, which is an app where you can walkie talk each other back and forth and send to each other. Yeah. And he he called and talked to me. I mean, the whole day he was bugging me about roll tide and this and that and all. And back to his, like the, the tiger's going to roar. And then the next day after the game, I didn't hear from him. Of course not. I didn't hear from him. Then, then of course, he comes back the two days later. Well, yeah, but the referees and all this kind of stuff. And I said, all I just want to hear you say, Tommy, you were right. No, but it was it was a it was a great game. But like as I started to say early on, Alabama defense they just played they played they played play out of their butts. You know they played like Alabama, and I think yeah. and I think offensively Clemson was was, was um, and Deshaun Watson was was a little bit nervous. I think they I think they I think they rained they didn't they didn't they didn't open up the offense early, mm. and, and so his confidence and some of the things they were doing just didn't work. But once but once they once they got um, the field position in their, in their favor. 
on the last one of the last drive and they went down to score. Yeah. The second half they opened up the playbook and they started stretching the ball down the field and, and, and that's when Clips started making a run. Well, the little bit I seen, Alabama looked like they were controlling the game, but it was early, early on that I passed out. But then I think the little bit I seen afterwards, it looked like Alabama controlled what was it, the turnovers, uh-huh. field position, yep. first uh, half, special yep. teams. I mean, it looked mm-hmm. like the things you would you would think that would allow them to control and dictate and win well, the game. Well, I think the first half, and 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 like I said, I was back and forth texting my cousin. And in, in the first half was the was the half that if Alabama was going to win that game. They had to put them away, and they had every opportunity to, to put the game away early, and they didn't. You know, I, I felt with the way the game was going, the way Clemson played. Going into halftime, it should have been anywhere from a twenty-four to twenty-seven to seven lead, and it went in at fourteen-seven. So yeah. obviously, so obviously there, Clemson withstood the storm and and, and the turnovers that they had. You know, Deshaun Watson fumbled a snap, and then I think the running back fumbled the ball or what something like that happened. But they weathered the storm and, and was able to keep it at fourteen to seven, which fourteen to seven they're in reaching point. And, and even mm-hmm. at halftime, when you look at total offense, yeah, Clemson had more total offense than Alabama. Yeah, so it's just one of those deals to where everything in that game kind of reminded me of the of the Alabama Washington game to yeah. uh, how Alabama dominated field position, but just couldn't score, just couldn't do the things that didn't really take, take the game over. Well, it seemed like yeah, the one yeah, just looking here like Clemson they punted nine times, but they only averages like thirty eight yards a punt. Well, it was that and, rugby style punt, and, and they were just trying to keep away from the playmakers. Is that what they were doing? Yeah, so you could tell it was just kind of control style punt, and just trying to keep away from the playmakers. You know, they were just trying to – what they always say, just kick the ball. You don't want – all you want to do is kick the ball. And so that, and that's the way Clemson played their deal to where we rather, we'd rather take a 38-yard punt than punt the ball and 45 then, yards and they can return 27. Yeah, that makes sense. So so let's just take what we get and then our defense – Let our there. defense do the and thing. The and the defense played well. Because Clemson in the second half, the defense played well. Well, I thought I heard – I was trying to find it. I don't know what the stat is, but I thought Alabama was like three, four, four. 14, 15, 15, or 15 or something for third down? 15 on third down. Yeah. The whole like, game. And they missed. They were like cow. 0 for 11 on the last, on the last 11. Yeah. Wow. And 0 for 11? That's, that's, un, that's unheard of. And, and, and it's just one of those deals where I know people are going to make up the excuse, well, or Steve Scar Sarkeesian, he's called offensive plays and stuff like this. I'm going to tell you right now, that's not an excuse because I, I thought Alabama's offense probably looked better with him calling the place because he did some things, got the ball to your playmakers, and, yeah. and you, you kind of had an idea. You kind of saw what they want to do. For me, I felt the game turned when they lost their starting running back, Scarborough, mm-hmm. you know, the guy who scored, I mean, the one who yeah. ran over. I think when he went out of the game in, in the third quarter, I think mid-third quarter, I think that took Alabama out of, their, out of the offense because now they're not able to pound the ball with that guy right there, he, and they weren't breaking tackles with the running back. And that's why I think when, Clemson, when he went out and Clemson went out and stopped him, that's when Clemson offense started rolling, and and and, you, and and even though even though coming out of halftime, Clemson fumbled the ball and Alabama got the ball, went down and kicked the field goal, made it seventeen seven. You still, I still felt Clemson was going to win that game just by just by the way the, the defense played, and it came out because they weren't because Clemson wasn't afraid of the deep ball. Yeah, you know they, they you know they knew that they thought they were going to throw the short passes, and but they they were focused on stopping the run, knowing that if they throw the ball short, they're going to be there. And of course, now the one big pass play they did was a bubble screen when the guy faked it and went and hit it for a six yard touchdown. But it was it wasn't like the guy threw the ball fifty yards. How late? How late in the game was that? Um, that was probably what late third quarter. Oh, late third quarter. I was trying to. When did so they because they put up twenty one points in the fourth yeah, was, quarter. Yeah, right? so yeah, so so what so what it was so after they scored that long touchdown, Alabama did. That's when Clemson went down to drove down the field, and the quarter changed, and so then they scored right away. And then Glenn Clemson got the ball back. And then Alabama, I think Alabama went down and scored. Or they something. scored once. No, no, so, no, so Alabama, so Alabama got the ball back, punted the ball to Clemson. Clemson went down and scored again to take the lead. And then Alabama comes back with Jalen Hurt, goes down and take the lead with like two minutes up in the game. And then Clemson got the ball back and then drove down and field and, and one second left and slow through the little pick screen, whatever you want to call it. So it was right out. at the end of the game. So it was right at the end of the game with one second left God in the game. So, so 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 Clemson got so it was one of those deals you like Kim Clemson. Kick the, kick the field goal, go on overtime. Because if you run a play, and yeah. you, and they had two timeouts. But in Clemson, like, no, we're going to go for the win. You know, we'll hopefully get the ball out. We'll drop it, whatever. Well, it was, they called the perfect play, man covers. The outside wide receiver went in, and DB grabbed him. Other guy went in the flat. Yeah. The guy tried to – I mean, it was, it was a great game. It, it was, was the great. game we expected. Now, was it was it a well-played game? No. But but was it an entertaining game based off the you got the, you got the, had the two best teams yeah. from the start of the season? These were supposed to be the two best teams. Yeah. 
And when you talk about a trilogy, when you talk about, excuse me, a sequel, the, or the year before, Alabama won the game basically off an onside kick that, that put them up two scores and Clemson couldn't come back. And then you got this year, Clemson goes down, or Alabama goes down, take the lead, and got Clemson, the best player in college football, in my opinion. Yeah, you said that. Drove his team down the field to win the game. I mean, and, and he threw for over 400 yards against Alabama. I'm assuming Alabama. he's the MVP. Yeah, he was off as MVP, MVP, but he threw for 400 yards. Yeah, over 400 yards. Yeah, that's, that's really two years in a row. Because the year before, he threw for 400 yards. Yeah. This versus the, the best defense in the country. Yeah. So what does that tell people? If you got an athletic quarterback, you got a guy who can push the ball down the field versus Alabama, you're gonna, you got a good chance of winning. Now, mm-hmm. rushing, Clemson didn't do much rushing. No, they averaged like they have like two point two point eight or two point five. Yeah, they rush. got shut down rushing. But but well, that's the crazy thing. When I woke up, and I'm looking at the, some. I, I was looking at the stats, and I didn't watch any video. But I was just watching the stats. I'm like, what the hell? Like it almost, it is almost the opposite in many areas of what you would expect. You think when you hold a team like that, you you, yeah. you, you win a turnover battle, yeah, and, and you hold hold a team to two point some yards rushing, you won the game. Yeah, no, not the case. Because because Clemson defense played just as well. With the exception of a couple of big plays, early on you could tell they were nervous. You know, the two touchdown runs early, there were missed tackles there. You you can tell that. And then then Clem, then uh, then all then you got the long touchdown pass. Well, that was a busted coverage. Okay, and then Jalen Hurt, his touchdown run. I mean, you had a free safety unblocked run right at him. He made one move and run by the guy and scored. So so all of Alabama's plays were based off missed tackles. It wasn't like they really just drove the ball down the field and scored against scored against Clemson, with, with the exception of the last drive when they scored. Yeah, you know they, they drove the ball there and they actually they actually had to convert like a third a third down or a fourth and short to keep the drive going. And so 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 I take my head off to Alabama because they went out and they played and they forced Clemson to win that game. Four they had four wide receivers with over ninety yards each. Yeah. Yeah, the number the, the number one guy, Mike Williams, yeah. number seven, Renfro, the guy, the, the little little short white guy, the slot guy. He had what three, two, two touchdowns. Then he had Kane. I think had had, had, a, had a, a couple a, a couple good passes. Then was it Scott Leggett? Oh, that's the tight end. Excuse me, Leggett, the tight end. I mean, he had yeah. A big Scott game. had Scott was only three for six. Yes. Yeah. So 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 what I was so right. that's the one thing I said. That's the one thing I, I said last week before the game was. Clemson has too much, too many weapons, too many, too many top ten players on offense to where you're not gonna be able to control them all. You're not gonna be able to contain them all. And and and, and people in Washington had some talented receivers too. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But they were on the outside, so so they couldn't take advantage of it because why? You just shut them down. You get the pass rush there. And and, and but with with Clemson, you get them in third and six. Now you still throw the, the short pass across the middle of the field, guy catching, and still get the first down. There's just too many targets, too many weapons that they had. And then, then you throw in the threat of a quarterback who can run. Can run. So of course they had to spy a guy on the quarterback, you know, because it, it just, it just, it just. Clemson had the perfect offense to be able to compete with Alabama. Yeah, he put up himself. He put up over over four hundred and fifty yards. Yeah, yeah. That's cr- Do you know how many yards you ever put up? What's your highest in one game? Do you know? Oh my! Combined, I think, I think my highest in one game. Because you guys didn't throw nearly as much. I think I think it was close to four hundred. I think I think I think it was almost three. Just over three hundred. I think I think it was like two some. I think I threw that's pretty two. good for that team because well, you were had you had so we, many we had weapons. We ran the ball. I think I think Colorado threw from uh, I think two two hundred forty one yards and had like seventy some yards rushing. And I think the bowl game I had like almost two hundred yards rushing and a hundred. Oh, that was ridiculous. Passing. So I think it's close ridiculous. to three hundred. Three hundred is the most. Hmm. But but at the same time, though my three hundred yards versus his four hundred yards are equivalent yeah. based on the style of offense that we ran. Yeah yeah yeah. Oh yeah yeah. Absolutely. I think. Yeah, I would hope that most of the listeners would understand that too. They had very different offense, and it, it makes it does make a difference. But I was just curious if you mm-hmm. if you even knew what that was or what. It I was. think the most like three fifteen, three twenty. Whoever has the answer on Twitter, and we'll send them a picture if you know, if you know the answer. There you go. What's the most total offensive yards Tommy put up in a game? That's a good one. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, but don't I, know. I, I know it's I, I can't. I, I can't tell you. I, I know it's over three hundred, but I can't tell you exact. If, Cause I think I put up three. I think I put up over three hundred yards in the, in the Fiesta Bowl. I mean that game was ridiculous, mm, and most of that. And, and I don't know what was going on. I would, you know, I, I would. and I did get, I did rush for, I did get the two hundred yards rushing in that game in the Fiesta Bowl. Uh huh. And then I lost five on a on a on a shuffle pass, but they they, started, they, count, they counted as a run. Oh, so they well, you finished with what like one hundred ninety five? One hundred ninety nine. One hundred ninety nine. Yep. 
<laughs> but I did get two hundred, get over two hundred yards rushing that game, and I and I lost five yards on a, on a run play, which technically was is a pass play. But they, yeah, but if they, but if they count as a pass play, then it'd been a sack, and we didn't want sacks. So I take I take it on the rushing yards. You know, there's some games where I don't know I don't know what Florida was going on in Florida, or even out like some games where people just. I don't know. They don't play to their potential, and the, the, I think the mind, the pressure, the no, no, you know, I think it is. I don't think that they don't play to their potential. I just think sometimes other teams force teams not to play to their potential. Oh, that's a good point. You know, you, and, you know, you, you go back and look at, and, and, and everyone goes back and talk about the championship games. Yeah. You know, did Alabama play to their potential? They Defense. did. They did for this game, I guess. And, and, you say I, that? and, and I, I look mean, and I go back and look at. It, I'm like, well, yeah, they did. And it's like, well, defense they didn't. Well, defense they did. I mean, this is that. Yeah. Go back and look at last year's game when these two played. Clemson threw up a lot of points on them last year when they, the defense pulled had been better last year. Yeah. So I think Alabama played. And I think and, and, and offensively they played better than they did the week before, in my opinion. Yeah. So I think Alabama played. I think Clemson was just a team that probably was a little bit better than them on that night. Now, if these two teams play ten times, it might be six four one way or the other. Yeah, it's not going to be one team going to win eight, the other team going to lose two. Yeah, it's going to go back and forth to where one team might win six, the other team might be win four. That's how I see these two team match. Just depends on out of ten times, or it could end up five and five. Who knows? Is Deshaun Watson a senior? He's a junior, but he he announced that he's going he's pro. Second junior. Yeah. Oh, he is. So. Yeah, he announced right at that night after the game that he's going pro. Well. That'll change the dynamics a little bit over there. Well, yeah. You but, have a weapon yeah, like but that. They, but they, they, they got the number one quarterback signed out of high school coming out come from Georgia, I think. They're south, somewhere, on the, somewhere in the southeast. But here's, the, here's my problem with that whole deal there. They're, they're the Clemson, the, um, they have Clemson an 18-1 to favorite to win the championship next year. They already, you know, the, the next day they already had the odds out who's going to win. Yeah, Alabama's 3-1 yeah. once again, and I just don't see it. I don't see it because they're losing too, they lose too many guys. And the, and the problem with Alabama, in my opinion, is that one? They gotta they gotta be able to throw the ball down the field, more consistent. Two, they're losing a, 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 a stud of an offensive lineman who didn't play very well. He got the, he won the Outland Troy. He got the Outland Award here last night in Omaha. But three, defensively, they're losing too many of their top guys. And I know they say they reload, reload, but you can yeah, it, they were already like depth already. Alabama did on defense, so you can't reload that fast and get the same quality. Because you're losing Allen, you're losing you're losing. Your top linebacker, two top linebackers. You lose your best, your best rush in, and you're also losing a couple of second, second, secondary guys. You're talking about replacing six guys that are. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's tough. I'm sure there'll be a top rated team, but yeah. Oh, I but, mean, but, look at Ohio State. Yeah, oh, well, Ohio State. I don't think they. Gonna, I think they'll be worse. No, but I mean, and they, they reloaded this. Year. I mean, yeah, they changed they, out. They, they reload, but here's the reason why I think they're gonna be worse. Because they lost the coordinator, mm-hmm. both coordinators. Yeah. They lost both co core offensive coordinators. They lost the offensive line coordinator who went to who went to Minnesota. And they lost Tim Beck who went to Texas. Yep. Then they lost Luke, Luke Fick, Fick, Fickle, who's the head coach at Cincinnati. So you're talking about those are three coordinators. Now you now you're talking about you bringing in Kevin Wilson, who we all know he's a great offensive mind, but now you're talking about, now you're trying to change the terminology again, how he does things. Right? You lost their best you lost their best playmaker in Samuels. He he's going to the pros offensively. Yeah. And then so defense are going to be okay, but you, who's the defense coordinator? You got to find a defense coordinator now. And, and, and so that's a great segue into what, yeah, what, they, the, what Nebraska Perfect doing. segue. Great, like, great segue. Perfect. Wait. Just to officiate <laughs> it. No. no, it is. I, I mean, the most exciting, the, by far more exciting. This is more an exciting. I can't even say that. Exciting. This is an exciting week compared to last week. Like, I wasn't excited for the bowl game and or the last two weeks or it was like, all right, we're playing in this bowl game. We actually now. have something to talk about that people want to hear. Our this is exciting, and and and, and, I, and I, 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 we haven't talked about it because normally we, always, we try to talk about stuff no. off the air. But this we is, literally just came down here and hit and, and, record. Look, hit record. Normally we always talk about what we thought of this and that. And we'll start with small talk. But this week, I, I what is your what is your I want you to, I want to give you to give me your opinion oh, on what whoa. happened first before I give mine because I, I know I know people think I already think they know yeah. what I'm gonna say. Yeah. I, but but I'm, I'm, I'm going to shock people on this. I think. Oh, first of all, first, first of all, let's let's take each coach. Okay. Grunison, the And he was the deep director of football player personnel. Okay. I don't think he. I don't, what do you think of that? What do you think of that move? I know, you know, quite honestly, I know so little about. Here's what I don't know. I don't know enough about that position. 
You know, because when you were there, it didn't really exist, right? It, well, it was it, kind of rolled up. And it's, it's, it's like the football it operation. It was a line the, item. The, the, the football operation. We call them the DOFO, based what it was. So for me, and based off of our recruiting in the last couple of years, mm-hmm. I don't think that's a bad move. I don't know if it hurts us, really. Okay. Um, God, that's a tricky one. I that's almost the hardest one, in my opinion. That's almost the hardest because I don't know how much they though, when they're, when we're recruiting right now, how critical is he to the scenario? Well, well his to, job, he, his job was always say, "Hey, we got this. I heard about this player here. Go visit this coach here. I set up a meeting for you to go here. If you got coaches in different parts of the country, and you say, well, I got a friend here. They say you got this player here. Talk with guys. And you go, you be there at two o'clock. You get you down with the player. So he was the one who basically handles all the assistant coaches' recruiting schedules. To tell them, hey, make sure you stop by here. Make sure you stop by there. They have player here. They it have seems there. like. In my mind, knowing, not knowing enough, mm-hmm. it seems like that is the easiest transition to make is replacing that position. I agree. Uh, I agree. That, that's why. So that one right there, and he wanted to be back on the field coaching. Yeah, good for him. So good for him. Go to San Jose. Good for him. Kudos. Platform. Yeah. Platform. Two times. Two times. <laughs> one day we go. Wait. So, so that one didn't bother me. That, that one doesn't bother me as much. Yeah. Okay. Brian Stewart. This one's, a, yeah. So this one I found really odd. Like, in the timing um, I'm assuming they waited. He made his call or announcement, or or was he pressured out? Because uh, the coordination of the timing when these were all announced, I thought were very, right. it was very odd. Right, right. Um, I would take that as a sign of he was. Get, I have no idea, but I look at that and say, was he given a courtesy to leave on his own terms? Right, um, right. Or was he pressured out? Um, that one, I. I don't know what to think. I'm gonna say, and, and I and I and I know Brian. I haven't talked with him and all this kind of stuff because you know that's you know certain times when you talk with people and all the kind of stuff. I just in recruiting, I try to stay away from all my friends who coach and coach. Yeah, you know, I'm good friends with a bunch of guys in coaching. We're doing right now doing recruiting time. I don't bother them because they their their minds are on something totally different. Than, hey, how you doing? This and that. They let them do their job, and after recruiting, that's when I touch back touch base with them again. I'm gonna say this, and this is my opinion. My opinion only. I think he was pissed off that he went out and hired the, hired the guy from from um, Arizona, and then he's gonna move him back to safety. He's gonna coach safety, and the guy's gonna coach oh. corners. So I think he was pissed off, and he went out and 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 and, and realized that hey, this this, this deep coordinator job was open at Rice. He knew the guy, the guy this and he hired him. Yeah, that's why I think that's why I think that happened. I don't think he was out. I, I think he truly liked it. He liked it here, but well, but you, but when you go out and you do the things, make the moves that you yeah, make. Yeah. And basically, especially when we, we we all said here, hey, secondary corners, they played they they, they played very well. They played very well. So now you're saying he coached the corners, well, banker coached the safeties, yeah, quote unquote, what they say. Yeah. And now you now you're saying, okay, well we're gonna bring this guy here. He's gonna coach the corner. We move you to safety. What are they saying about the improvement that I made with those guys? That's just my opinion. So no, so, I- so 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 if if that was me. In that position, and they go out and hire a guy who coaches the position that I coach, and they move me here. That's a slap in my face, saying the job that I did with, with those guys from the first year this year wasn't good enough. And, and it's like with your job, you're right. It, it's just, it's just oh. a hypothetical. Your job, you out there, you managing it, you manage your group, manage your group, manage your group, and then they say, "Oh wait, a minute, we're gonna find you some help, so we're gonna get this guy. We're gonna, be, well, we're gonna get, have you coach this side of the, this this group, but then we're gonna have focus on this group." That's gonna be a slap in your face, like, wait a minute. I yeah. Well, I was thinking about the impact to the team when you asked me that initially, but I absolutely agreed that he was one of two things. Either there was some conflict and he was asked based off, you know, there's tension, there's conflict, and he was asked right. to move on, or he was absolutely pissed off. I would agree with both of those. It, it, the scenario doesn't make sense. That, to, for, for me, it doesn't. It doesn't make sense. That's that's. I know it's a defensive coordinator job. But and, that's, and, 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 and that's another thing. Maybe maybe it's one of those deals where a guy called him and said, hey, I want, I want you to be my defense coordinator. And, of course, any any assistant coach yeah. wants to be a coordinator because their, their goal is to be what? Some Most guys, young guys his age, goal is to be a head coach. Yeah. And so, and there's so, always that chance. So, so maybe but, maybe that's probably what's gonna happen. Maybe maybe I'm, I'm looking at too much. Yeah. But my initial thought was, wow, he's pissed off going to Rice. But the, I mean, the, Rice is not even a power five. Conference. That's that's the thing. That's but, why I think it, that's but, an but, odd move. But it's still a decorated job. I know, but man, and, it's still and it's, and it's in Houston, Texas. Well, that's nice. Where the huge fertile recruiting ground there, cost of living there is cheaper. The weather's. I know better. the weather's a factor. Better is easy getting out of, but I can't. Ima- I don't know. I don't know if that is. 
Would you rather have your name associated to a premier program that has a chance at a national champion if you gave it a couple of years or to make that move so fast? It, 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 it truly, well, for him, I will say being a D coordinator is probably might be better because he's been a D coordinator. I mean, he's been a D coordinator in, in, in NFL. He's been a D coordinator in Maryland before he came here. So I think being, I think him getting back to being a defensive coordinator speeds that chance of him being a head coach. I'm not saying being a head coach at, yeah. like, at, at, at North Carolina or something like a power five. Yeah. But he could, like, you know, Jay Norvell, the head coach in Nevada. And if you do good things there, you move up that way. You know, USC. I mean, I mean, University of uh, uh, no, I'm yeah. not talking about Southern California, but I'm just saying, I'm just saying USF. I was thinking USF where, where Charlie just, Strong went. That one seems odd. That one does the, it is the timing and how it, it just doesn't, and yeah, absolutely bringing in another guy. Right. That, I mean, it doesn't. I, but I don't think it's going to hurt. I don't think it's going to hurt Nebraska and recruit him because, you know, he really wasn't bringing in many recruits. But I, yeah. think, I think it's going to hurt the image yeah. to recruits. I'm like, wait a minute, why, why, wait a minute, you got a guy who's leaving with two weeks, two and a half weeks left in, in recruiting season. Yeah. Okay? So so, so that, one, that one right there, I think it was more of a, um, you pissed me, I'm pissed off that you brought someone in here, so I'm looking yeah, at Yeah, I think there was a conflict somewhere. Yeah. And that's why that one happened. Banker. What do you think of that Ooh. one? Well, first of all, I personally like this move. You do? I do. Wow. I do like this move. I think uh, as a... <sighs> As a fan, so I'm going to come at it as, as a fan, yeah. probably not level heavily. As a fan, I am not overly impressed with the product on the field the last two years. Okay. They've gotten better, mm-hmm. but when we brought him in, the expectations were not to win nine games. They're to eventually play for national titles, and I know there's steps involved in that, but Nebraska said the checkbook is open. Yep. And when we brought bankers in, it was a disappointment. Nothing against bankers personally. It's like, hey, wait, that is not the program we're looking to build. We're looking to build a powerhouse or right. attempt to, and that doesn't seem like a move you would make to do that. Okay. Now, I don't know bankers and everything, but what we've seen on the field has not been overly great. It's been better. I will say that. Right. There's been more consistency up until the middle of this season, and then things started to fall apart. We started to see things that we actually seen back when Bo was here. Missed tackles. And, right. Uh, misalignment. I mean, it was just so, – so I think in order for Riley to prove that he is committed to the purpose and to stay face with the fans, I think he had to make this move. I don't want to see Riley go anywhere anytime soon. I want him to have the opportunity. And I think it was a must – almost a must-make move for him. Maybe a year earlier than what I thought. Right. But I like the move. Um, I think it sets the right tone for the fans. And and it says a lot about Riley too. Well, the question is, did Riley make that call or not? Because this is the guy he's been coaching with for twenty years, right? Well, same same thing with, with Hughes. Yeah, you know. So okay, so so that's how you feel about it. I like it. Okay. At this at at the, at the moment that it happened, I don't like it because of recruiting. Because of recruiting. Yeah, and then that's the rest the main reason why I don't like it. You know, you know, if it, it, it was okay for you to get rid of Reed, the special team coach, when you got rid of him, if you knew you were gonna make a change, get rid of him now, so you can go out and find a coach and find a call the coach. Now, here's why I don't like it. I'm not, I'm, and don't get me wrong, I'm not saying this is the right thing or the wrong thing, who was fired or not. But here's the reason why I don't like the move right now, because you got some defensive guys that you probably recruited, yeah, for his system. And now, what happens? So those guys now say, wait a minute, why do I want to go to Nebraska now? I don't know what kind of style of defense. And what if they go out and find a guy who coaches a 3-4 scheme instead of a 4-2, a 4-3? Yeah. You know, so so maybe it could have been one of those deals to where, okay, get rid of him, fine. But wait till after the, wait till the recruiting started. Well, I thought the timing was weird because of that. Like, it seemed he, like an, yeah, a very and, odd time. And, and I understand it gets to about renewing contracts and all that kind of stuff. And you say, because well, you got to got renew. But, okay, you could you could have you you sat, sat him down and said, hey, we're not going. We're not going to renew your contract. But here's what we're going to do. We're, we're, after that, we'll we'll pay you this much. Yep. Yep. And we'll we'll pay you this much. You stick around, and then we'll we we'll give you a seven also. So we so yep. we're gonna give you a bonus for doing this. Yep. But we're gonna but, but after after recruiting, we're gonna let you go. I already had no problem with that. But you do it right now with three weeks left in recruiting. That that puts a lot of people who are in limbo. Okay. And also, what it shows me is that wait a minute. Hold on. Why are all these changes happening on defense? 
It's oh. de- it, 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 I think defense probably was the most consistent part of the team. Well, we didn't get – yeah, I agree with that. I no, 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 serious though. No. I, 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 to me, defense yeah. is most, the most consistent part of the team. I think defense is the top 30 defense in the country, 30-something 30, 30 in scoring defense. So, for me, that's not bad. Okay. And people say, well, they got blown out in, 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 in Ohio State. Well, the well, hell. That was a that, yeah. What did the offense do in that game? Yeah. Okay. They lost to they lost to um they lost to Iowa. Well, hell, what did the offense do in that game? I understand defense gave up missed tackles, all that kind of stuff. Okay, but once again it goes back when one side of the ball is not playing, well the other side gotta pick it up. Well pick them up. So if this was Langdorf? And we we're talking about. I, so, I would feel the so, same. So that would be my next. So that would be my next. That be my next question. Yeah. You know. So if so, if you're gonna get rid of Banker, what makes Mark Langsdorf so special to where he he's immune? Well, and, you, and you can't use. Well, he didn't have his quarterback. Well, he didn't have his. Well, hell, you think Banker had his players? You think the Gallo defense had their players they wanted? I think that I, for me, I think this was a move of a panic. You could be absolutely right. That's what I said. It seems like it's a year too early. Because you, you, these are guys you brought here, cause and your statement was, these are, these are great coaches. These are guys I trust. These guys are going to help us win yeah. championships here. And then two years later, you got rid of three of the guys you brought here? Four of the guys you brought here? When you talk about he, Hank Hughes, you talk about it's Reed, Ford, Reed and yeah. Stewart and now Banker. So obviously, your evaluation of these guys when you first got here, you didn't do your job as a head coach, as a leader. Now, I'm not saying I'm not saying whether well, it's right or wrong or or, or this should have happened or shouldn't happen. All I'm saying is that the timing of these the timing of, I'm not even count the three and these these two. No, Stewart right. and Banker. Yeah. And they're both on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah. That's that's strange to me. When then, it's then, very strange. So 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 if you're gonna evaluate those guys based off of how they how the team played, then you should have then you should evaluate the offense the same way. And and, and offensively, there should have been a couple guys who probably should have been hmm. On the chopping blocks. Yeah. You said uh, I told you what I felt like a fan, but overall, you put it, I think you put it well together. Because as a fan, I didn't, well, actually, he made the move with the, with the special teams coordinator, and that's all I would expect and all I'd want. Yeah. Everything else, even though I don't, I'm not a big, I would not, I'm not a huge fan of the product on the field, I also understand it takes time. Yes. And I also understand we're dealing with players that we didn't recruit. So, the move doesn't hurt. I mean, I don't – like I say, I said I liked it. I like the fact that he's willing to make changes when he thinks he needs to make changes. I would also say it was a year or two early, I thought, at least. And I think, in fairness, as you said, offensive. The offensive side of the if ball. With the offensive side of the ball, too. Is actually probably worse. Is that, is, is that offense right now, is that offense that you saw the last two years based off the same coordinator, based off the same offensive line coach, based off the same wide receiver coach, based off the same tight ends coach or whatever coach – is it better? Do you do you see it getting any better? I, and and, that, and and that's not me being critical. No. But that is that that's a question as 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 a as a fan, as a question, as a person who watches, as a question, as a person who plays, as a question as as a, as a as a as a. If I was an AD, that's why I have to. That's why I, I have think, to evaluate. Him. I think Tommy got better. I think he got better. Now did he? And still, I think they now, used but, Tommy a little better. Yeah, but they, they, because what they do, they used him for his talents this last yeah. year. Yep. Okay. It's no different than there's no different than 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 than, than Lane Kiffin and Steve Sarkeesian using Jalen Hurts. They knew his talents was not throwing the ball down the field. Yeah. So they used him for his talent. And let me tell you, they no, they, they they got he got him to a championship. You're not gonna have a quarterback. You're not gonna have a running back. You're not gonna have the guys that you, they're gonna have all the talents right there. So you gotta so you gotta find out what they what they're good at and showcase them. Now. They put all their eggs in one basket this year with with, 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 with the Pat O'Brien or Tanner Lee. I don't know who it's going to be. I don't care how good they throw out and, and, and the receivers that they sign. I don't care how good the receivers they sign and they throw the ball, toss the ball, and all that kind of stuff. That, to me, that don't matter. That doesn't mean a hill of beans. Hill of bees. Beans. Beans. <laughs> like, B-E-A-N-S. <laughs> if they can't protect. Yeah. If they can't get a run game. Doesn't matter. Look at Washington. Washington came in with one of the top offices in the country. Okay. Alabama made them one dimensional, which when you make them one dimensional, what does that do? They put the horns back and let's get after somebody. That's what I see next year's offense going to be. If we can't run the football because our offense lineman can't make holes or block. Yeah, that means they're not going to be able to protect because now they're going to start sending blitz packages. It's going to make a confused thing. It's it's so everything everything falls into place here. 
So so and so instead of evaluating the defense the way you did, which is fine, it's your job. As a head coach, it's your job. Do the same thing for the offense. And, if you, and so if you're going to get rid of Banker and, you, and you're going you're to bring in a guy to help the defense when Brian Stewart's here, then you should have done the same thing on the offense side of the ball because offense was no, was no juggernaut either. No. And, and offensive line-wise, I don't think they'll be any better next year. It, is, it does seem extremely odd. Receivers the, re, re, and the and, and the timing and it just seems even with Banker like I don't understand that one at all on the timing. Why would you not wait a if few it, weeks? It, not, if, if, you, if you if you knew you were going to do it, you should have done it when you did with Reed. Yeah, you should have done it then. That way you can go out and find a defense coordinator because find find a quality defense coordinator because that's when everybody's leaving. Well, looking that's at, the thing now, right? If he brings in somebody else and it's, it's probably, and, and that's, so that's that's my whole issue with the deal. I'm not gonna, I'm not saying he shouldn't have done it or this. Not I'm just saying the timing that it happened. To where it's going, I think this. I think that that's going to hurt more than it's going to help. And I don't care who they bring yeah. in here. No, you're because now it's a trust deal. Now and now you worried about recruiting. You got to get that guy here and learn his players. It as again as the fan because, and I always say that as the fan because there's two sides. I try to be logical, but when I play the fan card, I'm not logical. Mm-hmm. I just like, hey, I want to see change. I want to see action. I, I like those moves, but when you really think about, it, especially after you talk about it, like. I think it actually hurts. It probably hurts us pretty bad next year. Well, well, it's going to hurt now more so because because okay, you bring in a guy, new let's, schemes. Let's just say, let's just say it is. And I'm just going to throw out a name because I'm cause I, let's just say if it is Bill Parcells, and then, then we know that's God not, that's, damn, a, that'd that, be awesome. that's a hypothetical <laughs> though. But I'm just saying yeah. Bill Parcells. There's two things that got to happen. One, you got to get here. Mm-hmm. Then you got to go on the road recruiting. Mm-hmm. Okay, and guess where you got to start. Recruiting guys that always signed on, say, "Hey, this type of scheme we're gonna run this and that." He's not even worried about the new class. Yeah. Okay. The new class. Then you gotta get back here and learn your defensive players, personnel, who you have, what you have, do they fit my system? Who this and that? Oh, we should have. We need this. We need that. We need that. Then you gotta teach your scheme to who? The coaches. Then the coaches gotta do what? Go teach it to the current players. Yeah. And all that within three months before spring ball start. Then you don't have fifteen practices in the spring. Come on. So, all I'm saying is that I'm not saying I don't agree with it. I'm just saying the timing of it is going to hurt more than people think it's going to hurt. Stewart, wow. I can you know there's this defense. That went, back yeah, they, that was, I think he, I think it was more. I'm pissed off because you know, how you handle the whole situation, bringing another DB defensive back coach. Yeah. Right? I think that was more of a pissed off deal. I think there was a conflict too. Was a conflict there, conflict somewhere. And they might not, they might not say that. And I could be, I could be way off base, but for me being in that position right there, leaving the University of Nebraska, and even though it is the defense coordinator's job, mm, going to a private school, mm, yeah. Mm-hmm, it's a little bit shaky there, but I think I think it's more of a I'm pissed off. You know what? Hey, I get, get to be a defensive coordinator. I get to go, I get to go run my defense now yeah. again. Well, kudos to him. Yeah, and he may he might got to pay him. I'm pretty sure he got to pay him a, a, a pay raise. You would it, think, yeah, because there is no state income tax in Texas. Oh, there's not. No. Ooh. <laughs> no. You benefited from that for a little bit. Uh, five years. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, there's some other there's some other underlining. Stuff going on here. It doesn't seem right. Yeah. Timing wise. and But I just tell people, no, 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 no. I know people going to go back and they're going to say, well, timing. No, I'm saying, what I'm saying is that well, got rid of God and got rid of God. That's to me, that doesn't matter. I'm just saying the timing of it happened. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Because it, it, if it had happened, and I'm going to repeat myself because I'm going to keep repeating myself, I want people to understand where I'm saying, where I come from with it. If it had happened in December when there was a dead period, there was no recruiting going on. Fine. When they say, "Well, Coach Bank is not going to be back," or we're going, fine. I'd have been happy with that. Or if it had happened after signing, I'd have been fine with that. It's no different than what Bo Pelini did with Ted Gilmore and Sean Watson. Yeah. Well, this reminds me of the Frank Solich last year, yeah. where there was just suddenly a ton of change, and that was it was a panic move. Yeah. Or or when Bo Pelini realized he wasn't getting the LSU job. Yeah, yeah. And so yeah. He, so they told both to Ted Gilmore and Sean Watson, "Okay, you got to go." Yeah. And so we, well, it's, to me, it's the same thing. You, you guys got to recruit and you, with you, with, with, with you. you don't get the LSU job now. Oh, they're not good enough to coach for you now. So, and then and, and I know people say, well, Ted Gilmore wasn't a good coach. And Well, obviously somebody thinks he's Ted Gilmore's a good coach because he's coached at where? Oakland Raiders. He's coached at the University of Southern California. 
And I think he's with a team right now who beat, beat Nebraska two years in a row and played for the Big Ten Championship, Ooh. Wisconsin. Uh-huh. So obviously he's, he's yeah. doing something when he's <laughs> landing good, good jobs. And so I, I, just find, I just find it odd. I just find it odd that it happened right now just with only a couple of two or three weeks left in recruiting. Do you think this was Riley's call? It has to be. You don't think there was any outside pressure? No, 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 no. I don't think no. Because this, this is the guys that he hired. So you, so if you, if you, if you hire these guys and as an AD, yeah, you gotta let this guy do do his deal because you entrust. So as AD, him. you're really going after. If you had to make a move, you're making a move with the coach. You're making a move with the head coach. You know, because that you, makes sense. Because you got you got to trust your guy, the head coach, the guy that you hired, to say, hey. You're responsible for putting us so assembling the best staff possible, and whatever staff you do, whatever moves you make, I'm going to support them. But I'm not going to tell you you got to get unless it's a code of ethics, something where something where it's unethical, or they're cheating, or oh, something yeah, like that. Yeah. But if it, if, it's, if it's solely coaching or recruiting or whatever it was, you got to trust the head coach to make that decision, and he going to come back to you and point and say, "Yeah, this is, here's my reasons why, why, why. Okay, I support you. Let's move on." What are you going to need to bring in a, a, another coach who can do just a, do a better job? That's where the AD comes into place. But to say you got to fire this guy, fire this guy, then if you're going to do that, then why are you letting him be the head coach? That's why you brought him here then, to, to, to run the organization, to, to run the football program, and you oversee it. Well, now what? Because that's, that's the same thing that, that um, Coach Osborne did with Bill Callahan. Say, hey, you got to get rid of the defense coordinator. He's like, no, this is my guy. I brought him here. I'm loyal to this guy. Yeah. And he didn't get rid of them. They didn't get they improved. They lost a job. Fine, I can, I can deal with that. But he still let him decide whether he's gonna fire a guy. Same thing that Bo did. Bo was, Bo was afraid to get rid of guys because he was loyal to his guy. Sometimes loyalty. Sometimes loyal being loyal to people. Yeah, it's not it's not a good thing. Well, now hindsight twenty two two side other side of this, it shows that Mike Riley. He's loyal, but it, it, he's he's loyal to a point, to where. If you if you're not getting you hey we we've been together for years yeah but if I feel you're not doing them the championship product on the field then I'm make a change. Well, that's that's what I like. That's yeah. what I like about this scenario is the fact that he took a guy that he coached with for 20 years and he was willing to make this change. Right. Holy crap! That had I mean that had to take. Uh, and I'm not the, like I'm not questioning wow. the change. Yeah. I'm just questioning why now instead of not in December or February. February, I mean, February 8th. I mean, I, yeah. I just wonder what you know. He's I, I don't know. I mean, now you're gonna you're gonna go in the next year with a whole new learning new, new different different scheme. And he's only got so much time here, in mm-hmm. theory. And like I say, it could, it could it could be a panic move. Cause he, I don't know. He could be because he could be saying, "Hey, if I'm here for five years and this is what I got, I need to make some changes quick yeah. if I want to hit anything past that five years." Yeah, correct. I mean, but but. We'll see when you know he get paid. That's why he gets paid the yeah. two two point seven five whatever it is million dollars to, to a coach. I run hope the program. he gets somebody established, right? Let's go see, get go get it. See, here's my here's my thing. I don't necessarily need, need need someone who's established. I just need a smart mind, and sometimes a young smart mind yeah, can yeah. be there. You know, it's no different than when when, right. when Bob Stoops went to Florida. He was he was at K, K- State, and he and he was he was a defensive co coordinator with Jim Levin. Jim Levin basically called to play with Bob Stoops in Florida. Steve Spurrier hired him at Florida. And look what Bob Stoops did at Florida. Yeah. You know, so and he was young. He was, he was young. So I, if you, I, you just need a, a good, quality, sound defensive mind, whether he's established or not. Because sometimes these younger guys are better than some of the established guys. No. Why? Because they're, because they're not afraid to, to elevate their game or go out and find new things and new techniques and new things they can do for their defense. So, so you don't necessarily need a big name guy you need a guy who's who can go out there and one motivate two yeah. teach three manage on defense on, on saturdays to me those are three things a defense coordinator need to do teach and then on game day call and manage the game efficiently yeah. that's what i think we need you don't need a, you don't you don't need a Bill Parcells. You don't need a I Bill like Belichick. Bill you don't need a Bill Belichick. A guy who you don't need a Pete Carroll. You need guys yeah. who are known, known for defensive well, mind. Well, I don't think you need anybody that's going to cause conflict within the coaching staff. Or well, look at look at Nick Saban. Yeah, how many defense coordinators have he's has he's had, and their defense hadn't fall off? Why? Because yeah. he focuses on defense. 
Jeremy, Jeremy Pruitt. But he wasn't really a big name coming here. They just no. won a championship at Florida State, but his name wasn't just flying across the country. Did you know who Jaron Pruitt was before nope. he went to Alabama? No. I didn't. Um, who was the guy who got the job? Um, Kirby Smart. Yep. Kirby Smart, who was at LSU with Nick, but but, but Kevin Steele was the first defense coordinator for, for Alabama. Then when, when then they gave it Kirby Smart, and then Kevin left. So it's that, it's that kind of stuff. But no one knew who Kirby Smart. They knew he was a young, young defensive mind. But if you don't have the players to <laughs> run it, because it's, it's it's crazy, and, and Alabama's the benchmark for everyone. How how you how you gonna take a coach out of their system and just add another guy in there, and it, it, there's not much drop. No, or they or they're better. Why? Because he because Nick they're, 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 they're running Nick Saban's defense, and he tells them what they want. He wants done, and you better get it done. Yep. So that's why yep. that's so that's why I said you don't need a big time name in here. You don't need to, you don't you just need someone who has a big time mind. Whether he, whether he's thirty five years old, whether he's forty seven years old, or whether he's fifty six years old, to me that doesn't matter. You just need someone who can come in here and 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 teach, motivate, and manage with what you have. Do they make an announcement if they ha- if they have somebody in mind? Do they wait until after recruiting, or do you think no, you got to make it now? Make it now. You got to make it now. If they have someone, you got to make it now. Because here's the reason why: you still got defensive guys who, who the, what kind of defensive mind will be around? Yeah. So, so you got to make that announcement now, because you want to make it fair to those kids. Where if they don't, if they if they don't fit the system that this guy coming in, then they got to get let that kid go some other place. You go find someone who does. Right. So you so you make the decision That's the now. Right thing, That's but... the right. You make that decision now. I mean, you can't you can't let it go to the week before signing. You gotta let it go now. You gotta make it. It, it gotta be announced, in my opinion, within the next three days. I wonder. I haven't heard or I haven't seen any candidates yet. But oh, they're throwing like they throw they throw some names out there. They threw out the um, the name um, on the deep the uh, former head coach from Minnesota, Tracy. Yeah, he's one candidate. I thought I thought I saw a couple other guys, but you know it's it's one of those deals to where you gotta. Oh, the defense! Oh, you you got to find someone now that can come in and motivate these players because you know they're going to be down now because they're like, wait a minute, we just established a bond with him and not now we have to establish another bond? Think about those juniors. This will be the third defense oh, coordinator. Yeah. They've gone through a lot. A lot of changes. A lot of changes. There's no stability down there right now. There really isn't. And, 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 and until when Nebraska was great, and I'm not, I'm not even talking. I'm not even talking about doing the Osborne years. I'm talking about even through, even during Frank's first three or four years, they were familiar. Their coach and staff never changed much. You might have had a coach here leave here. You might have had a coach there leave there, but you didn't have the every two year every year you got two or three coaches leaving. Even on the Bob Devaney, coaches stayed. On the Osborne, coaches stayed. I think the first coaches I remember leaving when I was in school was I think it was. Kevin Steele, Kevin Steele, Tony Samuels were the only two coaches that I know that left when I was in Nebraska. But all the other coaches stayed. Their stability, the players knew. You knew yep. he was going to be as a root. Now, those defensive guys don't know who's who's here. Perella's only been here one year. Yeah. So the longest tenure guy, the longest tenure guy on defense right now is Bray, who was is a young young guy. So I mean, people. You better buckle up. Fasten your seatbelt. So this is going to be a bumpy ride. <laughs> it's going to be interesting. It's going to be an interesting offseason for it's, sure. It is. It's going to be an interesting offseason. And, and, and like I said, he he makes the big bucks. Although so. we've almost had too many of those lately. <laughs> <laughs> It'd almost be nice to have kind of a. No, see, but let's see. Last year, the offseason bumpy was like, okay, let's see how let's see how much time he improves. Offense. Yeah. Defense. We need the defense. Let's see how much deep they improve up on this up on the same offense and same staff. Let's see what they can. This year is like okay. Let's see what kind of offense we're gonna run because we got a different style quarterback. Total different offense. Let's probably. see what kind of defense we're gonna run now because we got a totally different defense. Defense, defense coordinator. So this is why it's gonna be bumpy because you you don't know what you're gonna get. And I know people saying and, and people are speaking highly of of Tanner Lee and and Patrick O'Brien how well he be practicing bowl practice and all that kind of stuff. That's fine. I'm happy they did practice well. Oh, the sky's the limit. Uh huh. Yeah. Kudos. You can look good versus your own defense. What are you going to do when Ohio State putting those guys out there? What are you going to do when Wisconsin is sending um, Watts at you? We saw what happened this year. Yeah. 
And who have we signed? Tell me who offensive line wise, who have we signed? They're like, oh, this guy can come in and play right away. Hmm? Chirp, chirp. And is Nick Gates Silence. a senior? Is Gates a senior or is he a junior? Um, our best offensive line, our best offensive line was supposed to be Gates, and look what look what happened to him in the bowl game when Barnett I think he, when Barnett made him look like a, like a little child. And that's the SEC. That's not even the best team in the SEC, and and we couldn't move the ball against them. He's a junior, so he's back next year. And but we couldn't move the ball against him, and he's supposed to be our best lineman. Yeah. And I'm just wow. And then you watch the centers, what? 5'11", 275 pounds. Small big boy. Small big boy. Small big boy. People, we, we, it, it's, 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 like I said, I don't care who the quarterback is. I don't care what kind of offensive mind you have. You better be able to protect and you better be able to run the ball. And right now, I don't see us doing either one of those, running the ball. So, that's my two cents. <laughs> well, then. No, it sums it up. I mean, it's just, I don't even know what to say. I mean, you said it perfectly. It's just, uh, it's been a crazy ride. Yes. And, 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 and I'm, uh, I want to, and I'm, I want to see them doing well. And I'm, I'm always going to root for them. I'm all going to cheer for them. And, but I'm also going to be critical of them. Well, and cause, and cause people are critical of everybody. That's part of, that's part of life. Being being criticized is how you handle criticism. Do you shut down and you, then you, and you go in and you go in your, in your little hole and tuck your head in the corner and not come out cause you don't have, think you don't have any friends. Or do you take criticism and say, okay, I don't agree with you, but that's your opinion. So we're allowed to have our opinion, right? Doesn't mean I'm always right. Doesn't mean I'm always wrong. But when I say stuff, I'm just trying to get people to think outside of their box because I try to go both sides. So that's why I asked no, you. No. That's why I asked you. Well, let me. I want to see what you think. Well, if I, if you would have answered first, you probably would have persuaded me. Because once I, I said it, it's like I'm saying it here is what I think, and it's and then you said it, and like, oh wait, you're right. And, and then that's like, not me being right. Things. I'm just I'm just getting people. The, when I say stuff, I'm trying to get them because people are so skewed to when they, they they have tunnel vision. When they have when they have something set in their head, it's what they think, and nothing they're gonna do can take them off that what they what they believe in a person or believe in something. To where I try to usually. Give them the other side to give, make, make, make them look at it both ways. And, and, always, and that's one thing I always try to do with Tommy. With Tommy Armstrong this year. People always say, well, he's still making the same mistakes. He's still doing this. He's still doing that. Okay, yes, but has he improved? I've seen quarter, and, and people don't realize. Go back and watch the championship game. Watch Deshaun Washington throw a lot of balls. Watson throw balls. He threw them off the ball. Oh, he didn't follow through. He was throwing off the back of his foot because the pressure was there. Every quarterback does it. The key, the thing is, well, he was completing the pass because he had guys who who was getting open and catching the passes. So every quarter, so so, but people criticize him. Well, he threw an interception. He missed a wide open receiver throwing off the back foot. Well, guess what? Yeah. There's other, there's a guy who won a championship who made some passes like that too. But you don't hear that about that, do you? All you hear about, oh, he threw for over 400 yards and he this and that. well, well, because he he was able to make up for the play. He had other players around to making up for him. That's all I'm saying. So I try to get people to look at it from both sides. It's not not just try to be skewed and have tunnel vision because well you have perception because it's what you saw. That's the challenge. Is everything we look at or everything we talk about, we only see a portion. So mm-hmm. then we got to start applying all these assumptions. Well, and, and, and it just bothers me when people do that when because every game is like well, and, and I still remember a couple of times this year when people will tweet or call and say, well, well, did you see Tommy make that bad pass? When that's right, the first thing they said when he made that bad pass and this was not there, he threw the interception in. So kind of, okay, but did he not come back and help us win the game? What about all the good plays he made? You just gonna pick out one play or two plays? What about yeah. the ten? What about ten he made? Well, we see what happened. Well, we've already talked about this. We see what happened when he came off the field. Yeah, we, <laughs> like, like, there you go. Yeah. All right, you got a one thirty meeting, right? I got a one thirty mini. Yep, yep, yep. Got a one thirty. One thirty. We're, obviously, we're recording this in the middle of the day, so on that note, well, I'm on my lunch break. Me, yeah, me too. I'll call it that. Yeah, <laughs> I'll call it that. I haven't eaten lunch. Yep. Well, neither have I. So, but I had a late breakfast. So, yeah, I'm gonna go heat up lunch and eat it in my next meeting. All right. Well, that's, that's well, you, is, is it on the phone? <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, there's one other person with me, but they'll watch me eat and. They'll do most of the talking anyway. Right. So, right. So. You, you, don't do, you don't do much talking. I, I can already tell. Actually, I do. Well, it depends on the meeting. If it's sales, a lot of times I get on sales calls. Uh-huh. I let the sales guys and I just let me deflat, you know, wave your hand when you need me to answer something. Right. right. I don't like those meetings. Anyway. All right. Well, 
Well, until next week. Maybe, maybe we have more. Maybe we have our defensive coordinator and a new defensive back coach, and maybe you know we got more commitments. So who decommitted from Nebraska? Yeah, you know. So now it's it's, it's a fun time, Gary Stark. Now you're trying to find out who the new, the new and bright and rising superstars are going to be that's going to step on campus. Because we already have two of them on campus right now. Yeah, Calabrasca. I think those guys from Calabrasca. Yeah, I mean I think that's about the dumbest thing ever. Because you, but we'll talk about that next week too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like Calla, Nebraska. <laughs> All right. Anyway, go over to touchdowntommy.com or Facebook slash touchdown Tommy and Twitter slash touchdown Tommy. And no no Pinterest, you said last week. No Pinterest. <laughs> no, you know, YouTube. All those other you things. On YouTube. Actually, this is on YouTube. Okay. So there you go. The podcast is on YouTube every week. There you go. So you can find us. All right. Peace out. Yep.